Hello friends, I'm Mike, the Hi-Fi fanatic behind Audio Architects. For those who are already subscribed, it's good to see you back for more. If this is your first time here and you're into CDs, speakers, subwoofers, DACs, amps, basically all things audio, you're in the right place. It would be best if you stuck around for a bit because today I am going to open Pandora's box wide open and finally talk about why the CD is superior to vinyl. I will be talking about a very sensitive subject and many might get triggered or even offended. So viewer discretion is advised. Over the last year, I have slowly been planting seeds about the resurgence of the compact disc. Over the last couple months, I have doubled down. I've reviewed some fantastic CD players and have been all over the culture of the compact disc. Why, may you wonder, do I keep cheerleading for a format many of you thought died years ago when, you know, streaming became the new normal? Well, because you must embrace the past to fight the future. However, many of you welcome an inconvenient and inferior format to the CD, and I am here to explain why you shouldn't. Now, I know... The serious audiophiles who spend tens and sometimes hundreds of thousands of dollars on turntables, phono stages, cartridges, etc. are completely exempt from this video. You guys are dedicated to the ceremony of playing vinyl discs, and I respect that. I don't think I would be able to sway your opinion either way, especially since you've already spent all that money. <laughs> Sorry, just to be clear, I don't hate vinyl. I own a small collection of records that I play perhaps once or twice a year whenever I get a wild hair to do so. My position here is to prove with facts, not subjective opinion, that CDs are the superior format and why you should still be buying, listening to, and collecting CDs. With CDs, you don't have to partake in a ceremony every time you want to listen to your favorite album. A great deal of care and attention is required to maintain your vinyl albums in excellent condition. You must clean them, dust them regularly to avoid excessive surface noise. Some people like that snap, crackle, pop, but I don't. That's just my thing, though. But uh, with CDs, you insert them into your player and they are ready to go. A turntable stylus wears over time, creating unpredictable and often undesirable noise. That's just another chore and expense replacing the stylus or the cartridge. Vinyl records will lose quality over time, especially when there is excessive friction between a stylus and the grooves of a record. And groove wear occurs. It's called groove wear. So essentially, this means that the grooves themselves depreciate and lose their quality because of being played. That's it. <laughs> CDs experience no physical degradation from repeated playing as the laser read mechanism does not physically touch or wear down the surface. If the record happens to warp due to high temperature, scratch because of mishandling, or is damaged in any way, that record is pretty much done. They're incredibly delicate. CDs are considerably less sensitive to temperature, humidity, and rough handling than vinyl. Stamped discs do not lose quality over time. However, CDR and CDRW formats are a whole other story. Um, those can slowly degrade over several years, unfortunately. But it would be best to store a collection of vinyl records in a controlled environment to prevent degradation. To sum it up, CDs are much easier to use and maintain by a considerable margin. People can argue their subjective reasoning as to why one is better than the other. However, on paper, it's clear. CDs are the superior platform. Vinyl is physically limited because records must be capable of being played without noise, skipping, or causing distortion to compare to the near-perfect sound you get from a CD. The lack of dynamic and limited frequency ranges is often apparent when comparing the two formats. If specific musical notes get too low in pitch, less audio can fit in a given amount of vinyl. 
This is why many will claim that the bass sounds much richer from a CD. If notes are too high, the stylus has difficulty tracking them, causing distortion, which can affect a listener's experience. So what do, we, what do the engineers do? They have to master vinyl differently, often cut back on extremely high or low ends using various methods, all of which alter the music. Even the best mastered LPs have far higher distortion, non-linear frequency response, and playback quality that worsens as you get closer to the center of the record due to the linear speed of the groove. And it's only suitable for about 12 and a half bits of resolution at best, compared to a Redbook CD which has 44.1 kilohertz sample rate, giving a bandwidth of 20 kilohertz or more, a 16 bit with offering a dynamic range of approximately 96 decibels, you can calculate the appropriate bit depth for any medium, including vinyl. Shannon's Sampling Theorem, which applies to all information systems, analog or digital, says that information capacity is approximately equal to 6.02 bits per decibel of dynamic range. Since vinyl can only reach 75 decibels at best on a fresh virgin record that equates to about 12 and a half bits. An LP's bandwidth varies from 20 kilohertz at the outer groove to about 15 kilohertz at the inner groove. The restricted bandwidth means that the resolution of an LP is slightly less than 12 and a half bits. There will be those that argue that the sample rate and resolution of LP are infinite, and thus the bit rate is infinite. The people who claim this are sadly mistaken. Infinite resolution in both time and amplitude requires a system that exists for infinite time and has endless energy and bandwidth. No such system can exist, even on a theoretical basis. None of the advocates of the analog is infinite theories have produced a single credible contention to support their argument, nor have they even shown the possibility of a flaw in the logic of the sampling theorem. So yeah, there is a simple math. From a technical standpoint, not subjective, CD quality is superior to vinyl. CDs have a better signal to noise ratio, expansive dynamics, better stereo channel, separation, and no variation in playback speed. Playback speed. Um, the last thing I will address is the warmth of vinyl that so many vinyl enthusiasts claim to hear when playing an LP. Many people love that warm analog sound. That's how they describe it, warm. When it comes to the warm factor, it's most likely that people are describing the inherent distortions in the vinyl format that result in a unique distinctive sound some people do prefer. Now don't get me wrong, vinyl pressed decades ago from original master tapes can definitely sound quite nice, but however, today, today's new and remastered vinyl albums start from digital files. So, in essence, the new vinyl LP is consistently inferior to what someone will hear from a CD. Period. Collecting vinyl records is not a cheap hobby whatsoever. Many new and used vinyl records will be priced in the neighborhood of $30 or more, and the gear required to get set up with a decent playback system can add up quickly. You will need a quality turntable, sometimes a phono preamp, depending on whether your turntable has one or your you know, integrated amp has one, and of course, a nice cartridge. I wouldn't recommend buying a cheap all-in-one system since this could degrade your records much faster than playing them on a well-made turntable. CDs have maintained their price, coming in at around $9.99 to $14.99 for new discs and well under $10 in the used market, sometimes as cheap as a dollar or two, depending on where you buy them. Speaking of which, I did make a video about where to source CDs recently, hit it. Another factor that has affected the price of vinyl is supply and demand. Worldwide, there are only around 341 vinyl pressing companies with less than 100 in the US alone. The problem deepens with the fact that although many companies offer record pressing services, most all use the same 20 or so vinyl pressing plants available in the US. So of course, with labor, materials, time, and the growing trend of vinyl, it will continue to push the price. It could very well get worse. Brand new CDs are still very affordable and hopefully 
much more mainstream in the, in the coming years if I get my way. There isn't much more I could say about the economics of vinyl. It's simply unrealistic and unreasonable to be charging that much money, especially in the used market. So the fact that both CDs and vinyl sales are on the rise and staying consistent shows that the argument could be less about whether someone prefers CDs over vinyl for the reasons I have provided, but that we want something tangible in our digital world. We want to feel the pride of ownership and the satisfaction we get from opening a new piece of music and being able to play it anytime we want regardless of having an internet connection. Sometimes it's a good practice to unplug from the matrix for, you know, just a little bit and enjoy the art of music. Whether you are a diehard vinyl enthusiast or a CD fanatic like myself, I think our main objective should be to keep physical media alive in any way we can. We have to be friends, guys. I mean, the enemy of my enemy is my friend. So thank you for all, thank you all, I shouldn't have said that, but thank you all for joining me. If you're already subscribed, thank you. I have an online shop where I sell audio inspired t-shirts, hoodies, and other merch to help support the channel. I encourage you to check that out, buy some stuff and offer ideas for future designs. I also have an exclusive Facebook group and website that features a brand new forum for us to discuss hi-fi in a civil manner. If you are new to audio architects and like it so far, like what I just said, I, hopefully, I encourage you to check out some of my other videos to see if my channel's the right fit for you. And I would love for you to hit that thumbs up and end up subscribing and joining me on my journey in hi-fi. Thank you again for spending some time with me and take care guys. I'll see you next time, probably in a couple days.